Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about TDD and if anybody actually does TDD. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, does any do anybody actually use TDD? In theory it is good practice, but I don't really see anybody do it in real life. I always try to write all my tests afterwards. And the short answer is that that is definitely the common pattern that I see as well. Most developers never write in a true test driven fashion. I do under one circumstance and I will let you know which circumstance that is. So when I'm dealing with a test driven a TDD it's usually in one or two scenarios and it always comes down to the same thing. If I need to be 100% sure that I make no assumptions about the code that I am writing because I'm writing it from a different from a pers from a perspective that is outside of my own system, I always always write tests first because I need to structure a test that will break if something changes about the logic that I just wrote. Now this sounds very complicated, but I think it's going to make more sense when we have a concrete case. So <clears throat> Let's say for the sake of argument that we're building an API, you and me together. We're going to build an API and this customer has uh, a bunch of specifications and requirements on how the URLs should look and endpoints and like all of this good stuff. And so we sit down and we write that test. Now the most common thing I see when somebody is going to create an API is that they write the whole API, they do a bit of manual testing. But if we're being serious developers here, we're going to have to test it. We're going to have to have some type of test to make sure that the API actually works the way it does. Now here comes the first most common at the very least mistake I see people do. And that is that they write the test after they have written the API, which is a fee. I mean, it, it's not the end of the world that you did that, but what they will do is that most of these languages that we are going to write something is, in are going to provide us with different models. Like if it's a typed language or an in, uh, untyped language, it's not super important, but you have a model of some sort that is going to go over the network. You have a specification that states if you send in this ID on say the user endpoint, then you're going to get back an object or a JSON of JSON string that holds this data. Now that model, that DAO, or I know it's not DAO, uh, data transfer object, DTO or view model, call it whatever you want. This representation is very important. The reason why it's very important is because this is what the client is going to expect. And what I see a lot of developers do in this scenario is that they take that thing that they have in their own code base and they create a test that references the model that they have in the code. This is a big problem. And the reason why it's a big problem is because now you and I, we create a test that works and we send out this code into production and a bunch of, I mean, the customers are happy they start integrating, they start using our API, and then something changes. Like you and I, we realized that, all right, we we needed to change a field on this DTO or this, uh, this JSON object that we're going to send. And then we run it through our CI pipeline, everything's happy, everything's peachy. And then our customers call very ang angrily and are upset because their systems broke. If, you've, if you're thinking along here, you should figure out what the problem is. The problem is that we connected our model to our test, but that's not the perspective of our user. The user doesn't know that we have this internal model. All they know is that they're going to get a JSON thing back and that should be in a certain shape. The problem is that we had a, like, this is the one time the dry principle is really, really bad because we connected the test to the model. So when the model changed, the test changed as well. But that's the problem because if the consumer doesn't change, because the consumer never changed, our client is still depending on the old model, but we didn't learn that fact because we made the change without thinking about it. And the test didn't warn us about the fact that we just did this. It's just gonna say that everything's fine because from its perspective, it's fine because it's not depending or ex asserting or expecting a specific JSON string. It's expecting that data model that we're getting, right? So that's the one time that I really believe that test-driven development is like, you have to do it this way because it's the most stable way of making sure that your test will definitely break if something changes within the API. So in other words, what we should have done here would have been to say that, all right, 
we are just going to create a test now where we expect a data structure and we just hard code in a string, like a text string that represents the expected output that we're going to get from that API call. And that's it. We don't actually refer, it doesn't matter if it's a duplication because the, that's the whole point of this. The whole point is to decouple my, our test from our implementation so that if the implementation changes without us thinking about the fact that the client is still on an older version of this MP API endpoint, we're going to be get warned about the whole thing. Now, this is not the most common, of course, way of right, doing test-driven development. I, ha and, I mean, there are other scenarios where there's this exact thing is kind of similar but it's I will admit there's not that many cases where strict test driven development is going to be all that common most developers as the subscriber is mentioning is, are actually writing things in hindsight and honestly if you ask me at the very least I don't think I mean I don't think it is that big of a deal if the logic allows for it, because some people simply have a hard time structuring their logic if they have to think about the test before the code. But as I said, there are absolutely situations where I really urge you to do a test-driven development uh, approach to the problem. This would be one of those scenarios. Another good scenario is if you're writing very complicated logic, like a search function or something like that, it's very hard to determine what the expected output is going to be. Then you really want to write a suite of tests where if you, I don't know, if you put in one query, you, you already know what you're going to expect on the other side because it's so hard for you to predict what the logic should be. But if you're working on something that is super arbitrary, that's like, it's super deterministic, you're super secure in like, you know how this is going to work then I mean the test I'm not saying that it's pointless because it's not pointless the idea of the test is to capture more than just if it's working correctly it's also about capturing domain law knowledge and specification information so that anybody else who changes something can see how this code is intended to work but in that scenario I wouldn't say that having a test driven development approach is all that necessary and it seems to me at the very least that the vast majority of the industries is in agreement on this because very few people actually have a TDD workflow. So what I want you to take away from this is that TDD is useful. I've found that the most useful situations to use TDD is when you want to be 100% sure that you're not assuming anything about the code, where you're really th you're trying your hardest to look at, to to just have a different perspective, because that's the thing, right? When you're writing code, it's so easy for you to just oh, I know how the code works, and if it's really arbitrary and trivial, you might not even write the test because you at that point know how the code is being used. But that's the point of TDD. The point of TDD is to create a situation where you you want you want to have the perspective of the consumer of your code and in some cases that's really unimportant because it's such a trivial thing and in some cases it's really really important examples would have been as I mentioned you're writing an API it's really important that you don't make the mistake of like you know how the API works therefore you write a test that reflects your knowledge of that API you have to write it from the perspective of the client because otherwise you're gonna break stuff second thing is you're writing something like a complicated search function function or something like that or let's say you're creating an open source project or something like that where people are going to use a function or something that you have created and let's say it's machine learning or something like that it's very important that you write from the perspective of the consumer because if you don't it's going to be super hard for you to debug what's going on on their side and it's going to be really risky to change anything because you don't actually know what you what the the consumer of your um, library or function actually want. So these are the situations, at least for me, where I think TDD is very, very useful. Have a great day.